This is the Friday, December 13th, 2019 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us once again is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Delania. Nice to be here. John, we've got a couple great questions I want to make sure we touch on here tonight. The first one being here, I want to talk about some bigger picture things as we're nearing the end of the year. And the first one comes to us from Craig in Kansas, wanting to know what looks better to sell or has less upside between corn, soybeans, and wheat? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, the, um, uh, at this point, uh, I would say the least upside probably is in wheat, uh, but we may actually get that to move higher sooner, but I think that's maybe where the least upside is. And the most upside, John? I think the most upside is in soybeans, but it's going to take the Chinese coming in buying in the kind of quantities President Trump's saying that they're going to purchase. Okay, John, so with that being said, we've got another great, great question here from Tim in Crookston, Minnesota. When will the markets start buying acres? You know, um, farmers are already making decisions about this next year's crop, and, uh, and they're deciding today what they're, they're getting their fields ready. Now, a lot of farmers, they're, they're, they're still waiting because they can't get in the field to, to do anything. And so, uh, 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 but at, at the moment, um, I would say that we're going to increase corn acres as long as weather will allow us to do that and pull the bean acres down some. And beans, when we were sitting here about a year ago, beans was a completely different story. We were looking at a 1 billion bushel carry out. The story has definitely changed when you look at where we are today, John. I know you wanted to talk a little bit more about that. The, um, uh, the situation we had a year ago was really a very negative situation, and it started with very large crops in South America and very large crops in North America. I'm talking about the harvest of 19. Sorry, the harvest of 18. 18. I have my years yeah. right here. The harvest of 18, very large in, in both areas, uh, actually the entire world, very large harvest. We ended up with uh, being uh, uh, stuck with the beans because we couldn't trade them because of China and their tariffs. And so uh, we ended up carrying a billion bushels into the new crop year. And on my graphs, where we graph each year in uh, supplies as a percentage of usage, it was a big red bar, the farthest bar on the right, was a and it stood out above the rest of the graph so you could see just how big our surpluses were. What was really interesting in the report that came out this week is when we looked at that red bar compared to now our blue bar for 2020, it's much, much smaller. It's When you look at the 20 years worth of history, you can see this is large inventory, but it's not huge burdensome, and we must have decent crops this next year or we're going to pull that down again. So this is a much different picture fundamentally than we had a year ago at this time. In addition, uh, for soybeans, in addition, we had the Chinese uh, uh, trade tariffs. In addition to that, we had the Chinese losing half of their hog herd. So we really had some negative factors coming at us. And when you look at them now, the supply is not so big, the Chinese are coming back, and their hog herd is coming back. The last report shows they're increasing their breeding stock a little bit. So we see the situation much better than it was a year ago. We're not bullish or anything like that, but we think that there's reason to not be as negative as we've seen people here over these past few weeks. And do you think that that will buy back some soybean acres, John? No, I think that the farmers have pushed enough acres into soybeans that for rotation purposes, to the degree they can, they're going to switch back over to a more normal rotation, which would mean more corn acres and fewer bean acres. John, I've been reading some reports this week, too, when you look at China production, Chinese production, that they've also been increasing in soybean production. Does that have you concerned at all for the global soybean market? No, I think it's a relatively small increase compared to that big total. So uh, it, uh, um, uh, it's not uh, surprising that they're doing that uh, because they're having to import so many beans, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a drastic difference as far as their demand is concerned. Okay. John, I know you love price questions. We've <laughs> got a question here from Bear Trap in Illinois. When are the highs in corn and beans going to be? Well, there's a there's a really good question. It's the million dollar question, right? It's it's when the crop is most threatened. And so if you look in South America, there's growing crop. In fact, is they're moving right into the middle part of their summer and it's being threatened a little. They've missed some range and so they're not overly uh, uh, moist, but they're not 
overly dry either. Uh, they need to continue to get timely rains. And so assuming they get timely rains, then we don't peak on their summer growing. We'll peak on our summer growing uh, season. And, uh, and in recent years, that peak's been in May or June. Um, and so uh, I would be looking for a similar kind of a peak again this year. That's a real normal situation to have peaks on soybeans and, and, and corn both actually during that uh, May, June, July time frame when we're most worried about the crop. Are we going to see any sort of a rally though or, or maybe a high put in? I mean this year was such an abnormal year. We still haven't really seen USDA adjust to where harvest and yield and all of that really sits. Could we see a uh, high or maybe not a, a season high, but a contract high put in here January or February instead? Sure, certainly possible, uh, but uh, it, it, we have to rally up on something. Something's got to give us the move. Now, if it's a big move in the speculative funds, buying the market and taking it higher, or if it's a Chinese uh, uh, demand that comes right to the market here soon, uh, then we could get that in, 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 happening right now. But for at the moment, uh, I would go back to my normal routine. We make highs in May and June. And so if, uh, uh, if, you, if you wanted to do something that would get you a good average price, sell, a, a sell part of your crop every day of the months during May and June. And I think your average will turn out to be a pretty good average. All right. I, you took the question right out of my mouth, John. Selling every day in May and June. We've got one more question here from Dave in South Dakota. What should farmers be focusing on right now? Locking in a profitable basis or staying bullish on all these deals with China and USMCA and other trade? Watch your basis very carefully. We have basis in some areas that's just really very strong. And uh, so in those areas where you have very strong basis, you have to be awful cautious about not taking it. Uh, now, I don't see basis weakening in those areas because it's, it's, the basis is strong because they have a problem. Uh, but uh, uh, we've seen strong enough basis levels. We've advised people to make some sales in those areas because of the, the strong flat price. And Jen, when you say seeing the basis at being strong and not taking it, what do you mean by that? Well, if, if, there's two components to the, to the price that a farmer receives. One is the futures market, which represents world values and world situation. And the second is the local bid, which represents what's the situation in this county. And if the situation in that county is crop still in the field, people can't harvest, we lost the crop, we never planted the crop, you can think of all the things that happened this year, then you're in an area that the local price has to be bid up relative to the world because there's not enough supply and the demand still remains strong or remains constant. And so uh, when you get those opportunities, that part of your cash bid that is your localized component is something you have to pay close attention to. And this year is one of those years because we have localized areas where we had disasters and we have other localized areas where they have very big yields. And so the working that basis in between those areas, there's some profits to be made there. But you also have to watch the world component of it. And by that, we're now talking about crops in South America, crops in North America, and what happens with, with the trade with China. There certainly is a lot to watch here at the end of this year. There certainly is a lot, but it's much more positive than it was a year ago. Much more positive. Definitely. Gives us something to look forward to this holiday. John, I, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Delaney. Join us again next week when we'll explore how a group of farmers are growing their operations by sharing their talents and Jeff French is back at the market to market table. Until then, thanks for watching, listening or reading. I'm Delaney Howell. Have a great week.